Our headlines today. First hosepipe ban in Wales for 30 years as parts of the country are officially declared in drought. Concerns over ambulance response times. An 87-year-old lay under a makeshift shelter on his garden patio for 15 hours after calling 999. After yesterday's national rail strikes, today the focus shifts to London. Members of the RMT on the underground are walking out. Passengers are being advised not to attempt to travel. Good morning. A plot twist in the world of cinema. Top Gun and Bond draw in the crowds, but one of the world's biggest chains says a lack of blockbusters is hurting the industry. I'll be looking at what's going on. Last time you went to the cinema, you? Uh, in fact, I, I went very recently. Good. But uh, that is a problem because a lot of people are not going. Uh, the big cinemas really struggling with numbers. There are concerns that audiences just simply aren't returning after so many closed during the pandemic. Well, Hannah's taking a look at this and some big names being affected now. Yes. Yeah, morning. <laughs> well, morning. <laughs> morning, Naga. Yeah, some really big names in the cinema world coming out and saying things are not as they were and, and they want us to go back to our old habits. But will we? I guess that is the big question. Yes, good morning. The pandemic changed our habits and perhaps some are sticking more than others. When Top Gun Maverick hit the screens back in May, it was the most anticipated film of the summer and it got rave reviews. Well, Top Gun took more than £65 million at the UK box office in the first two months alone, one of the highest grossing films of all time. But it hasn't been enough to save the fortunes of the world's second largest cinema chain. Cineworld has more than 100 outlets across the UK. It's announced big financial losses after lower than expected ticket sales and says it's looking for a rescue deal. Experts say the pandemic is in part to blame, but there are other challenges too. The morning's newspapers now will start off with the front page of the Daily Mail, which leads with tens of thousands of students trying to get a university place after yesterday's A-level results. The Telegraph looks at analysis suggesting delays in hospital treatment because of lockdown may be currently accounting for more deaths than COVID itself. And the Mirror leads with the story of an 87-year-old man who had to wait 15 hours for an ambulance to arrive while lying under a makeshift shelter built by his family. The Eye reports on the Office for Budget Responsibility, telling Liz Truss that if she becomes Prime Minister, she won't be able to implement the tax cuts she wants to because they'll be unaffordable. The Daily Express says Ms Truss is planning new laws to crack down on unions, while the FT says she's also planning to overhaul financial regulation in the city. The Times reports on plans from the Health Secretary to hire a large number of workers from overseas to try and deal with staffing issues in the social care sector. While The Guardian features the bonuses awarded by water bosses to themselves by up, going up by 20% last year, even though they failed to meet targets on sewage pollution. And the same story also appears on the front page of the Metro. While The Star says that some pensioners are finding it cheaper and easier to rent property in Spain than it is to face the cost of living here in the UK. The Daily Mail reports that 43,000 A-level pupils who ended up without a guaranteed university place are scrambling to get on a university course via clearing. The Times says that exam boards could see a record number of appeals after top grades fell by 60,000. Let's look in the mirror as well. They're asking the question, what's become of our country? As it shares the story of an 87-year-old man who waited 15 hours for an ambulance in a shelter built by his family after taking a fall.